Um, I'm going to be presenting uh, basically the results of a project, a kind of mini project that I ran uh, this summer. Um, I must say at the beginning, this has been a real learning curve for me. It's something I squeeze in between my work, my, gra my background. I am, uh, I'm not a field archaeologist, I'm a classical archaeologist, I did this thing for not actually divorced from one another. <laughs> Um, but actually, I'm not even a classicist. I came from an art background. Um, uh, and I'm not a statistician. <laughs> you, you will come to understand this. Um, so it's, it's a, a learning curve for me. And what I'm hoping to do is give you just a taster of, um, uh, of the kinds of things that I did. And actually, what I'd like to get is feedback, really, on the whole kind of idea and the, um, uh, the direction it's running in and yeah. I should start as well by saying thank you very very much I was really no, thank you grateful to be uh, included so um, the context of what I'm talking about uh, is that uh, a friend of mine runs a series uh, a lecture series in Bermuda which is where I'm from um, and he said to me what do you want to talk about and uh, the first time he proposed it I said well, I'll talk about my own research and this time I thought aha now, maybe this is a good context for me to actually talk about something that I've been thinking about for a long time. Why is archaeology so white? Why are there no black archaeologists in my department? I'm in Durham, so um, that's a whole other kettle of fish. But, you know, there's, there's really, as we know, not very many black archaeologists um, in our department. Um, so I proposed this to him. He said to me, so what's the literature like on this? I was like, I don't know, I'll tell you later. I'll, I'll find out <laughs> before I get there. Uh, Thinkfest... Uh, has um, it, it, it's very race oriented uh, and so it's likely to attract a diverse crowd uh, and so that was a, a good excuse for me to go and talk about that and to find out what the audience thought and I thought at the same time what I'll do is run a survey um, which was a other whole learning curve and um, just to give you the background you probably know all of this uh, the profiling the profession uh, survey, the last one that was run in 2013, published then, um, found that this was the discrepancy between um, the population. Uh, I say that's faulty, it's, it's, it's about right, but the numbers actually didn't add up to 100%. Um, percent. <laughs> uh, but it, it basically gives you the, the idea of what the discrepancy is between the population um, in general and archaeology in the professions. And there's also some information about universities from this 2012 publication on the uh, historic environment. Um, and you can see again, there's, there's quite a discrepancy. I probably don't even need to show you this. This is uh, undergraduate students, um, and this is uh, applications and acceptances. And uh, my friend Io was um, smart enough to point out to me that actually the, the greatest discrepancy here is between the acceptances and the applications. People are applying, but they're not actually getting accepted. What this doesn't show, however, is what the offers were. So we just don't know what the, um, really what's happening there. Um, people asked me when I presented this uh, in the summer, and I said, that from my experience, it's got to be that the, you cannot uh, account for the grades. You know, if, if somebody doesn't have uh, the grades to get in, there's only so much that admissions will let you do. But I just, I don't know what the, the problem there is. So apart from that admissions problem and um, being accepted onto courses, what else is the issue here? Why uh, is archaeology so white? So I did a, a, a brief or uh, as much of a literature review as I could at the time um, and looked into explanations that are in the, the literature. <laughs> so this is a report by Maria Franklin in 1997, um, and she points out about four main causes for the underrepresentation of black archaeologists in the US at that time. Um, it's not got great economic prospects, I think we can all agree with that. <laughs> um, it's public perception um, as a study of the exoticized other, rather like anthropology, uh, lack of awareness of archaeology as a powerful tool for uncovering black history, so lack of awareness uh, and a corresponding uh, lack of communication by archaeologists um, uh, to, uh, about the power of archaeology. Um, the barriers to participation in the historic environment uh, workforce 
also <coughs> related uh, some other things which I thought were really interesting. So school exposure, we know that school exposure to archaeology is not great. I mean, where does it come into the curricula uh, now? We don't even have an A-level. Um, media perception, again, it's a white middle class pursuit, or it seems to be. And their assumption about uh, knowledge and skills, so it's, it's, seen, it's seen as purely academic. My experience is seen not as purely academic, it's seen as something that you do if you want to dig holes. Um, employment prospects, again, and uh, parental expectations, which feed in to all the rest of that. Um, so this media perception, it's going to be no surprise to anyone, is a big problem. Um, I'm not going to go to Indy, I'm going to go to Leonard here. Um, and it's not to use him as a straw man and knock him down, uh, but this kind of quote, I can, you know, we can all see where he's getting at, but uh, you know, it's, it's not all jolly japes for some people. Um, so that kind of persona is embedded in the view of archaeology, and in my experience, people are very well aware of this uh, in Bermuda as well. In the run-up to uh, the talk, um, most of you will probably know that this is a story of Twitter. <laughs> I mean, a lot of this sort of conversation is happening in social media. Um, of course, publications, but it's very fluid uh, in social media. And this uh, um, chap, Harold, uh, had posted a couple days before I talked, and I was really fascinated by the things that he was talking about, um, which really uh, started to touch on the sort of things that I was interested in, but it went in a slightly different direction as well, um, because he started to ask things about what we are expecting of people when we ask them to participate. If we say that people are, um, when we talk about engagement, then we talk about the unengaged, um, and we actually don't really care what engages them, we just care about the fact that they're unengaged with what we think is, should be high on a, a, an agenda, a cultural agenda. Um, right. So, to ask people, uh, this was the, the, the thing that I really wanted to do. How am I going to do this? So learning curve number one, learn how to um, mount a survey, <laughs> learn what uh, survey to use, uh, survey software, and learn what questions to try and ask, which is still uh, a learning process. And the methodology was an online survey only. Um, uh, it was mounted on a JISC. Um, online surveys platform. It had several stages of peer review with uh, colleagues, friends and, and family as well, and it ran um, from September through to November. So it's really only just recently closed. And it was advertised to the public through news reports uh, surrounding the talk that I gave in September and then recently before it closed down, which was about maybe 20 more respondents. So uh, if you want to see a copy of the survey, I made a copy of it at this address and it will be open until 20th of December. So you can go through what I did is, is made the questions not mandatory so that you could just kind of browse through it instead of having to tick all of them before you could go on to the next page. I was going to show you through uh, this, but I don't have time. So. <laughs> so. Online reactions surrounding the survey um, fell into two kind of polarized camps. And again, this is probably no surprise to anyone. The first is uh, the, those that said, everything is about, why does everything have to be about race? Why are you making everything about race? And um, one person even called it a preposterous and offensive proposal that archaeology is even white at all. Um, there were also those who were equally offended um, uh, because they already saw archaeology as a white fashioned discipline that basically um, involved grave robbing. And that was a bit of a surprise to me. So that was particularly enlightening. Um, I thought people might find it boring. I didn't, you know, I didn't really, I guess, know what people would come back with. But I didn't expect to be attacked as a, as a grave robber. But, you know, well, graves, but... Um, but that was really interesting in how people differentiated between history and archaeology. Because archaeology is about stuff, getting the stuff, taking the stuff, putting it somewhere it doesn't belong, and then interpreting it in ways that perhaps it shouldn't be interpreted. And it really hits the, the 
nail on the head in terms of how fundamentally archaeology is considered to be a colonialist and a racist pursuit, uh, a racist discipline, um, and therefore tainted as a concept to some people. And, you know, the question is, is that irreparably so? Can that be changed at all? So who answered the survey? There were only 115 responses out of an island of about 65,000, but that includes children, so uh, let's say about 55,000. So it's only about 0.002 of the population, but it's not too bad. Um, this is the uh, 2016 Bermuda census. Um, and you can see that there is a disparity in the proportions of white people who responded to the survey. So there's a bias there. <clears throat> Interestingly, I don't know how many of you know this, but in Bermuda there are three races and one of them is Portuguese. So people self-identified as other Portuguese. Um, or even Portuguese, uh, an African or Arab African. And my favorite, I'm not sure that I am white, I may not be. Um, that was a female in the 70s, in her 70s, um, and a, a, a few others as well. So that was an interesting exercise in and of itself. <coughs> Apparently online surveys have a gender bias. Women are more inclined to take online surveys, and this is upheld by the results of this survey, which has um, about a third uh, of men and two-thirds women. Age participation was roughly equal to the balance of the, the census. You can see uh, that there are slightly fewer um, of the 15 to 29 year old category. And that all kinds of ages took part from 18 to 81. You can see a spike around my birth date here around 1970, which probably means a lot of my friends took the <laughs> survey <laughs> to be upfront about biases. And yeah, so you can see again this sort of spike in the 45 to 64 <coughs> age group. I use that age group because that's the age group that was published with the census. So I wanted to try and use some categories that might be matchable with other um, survey evidence. Um, and you can see that out of that group, the highest number is women, so female, um, and the highest number is are white here. And unsurprisingly, lots of white women <laughs> took the survey. So that's the, the largest uh, spike there. Um, we could go on and uh, dig into that graph. I also asked a bit about class because I thought, uh, you know, I may be able to uh, make some um, analyses on that. I haven't been able to really do any yet, but it's not that surprising that most people identify as what they call the fast disappearing middle class at Bermuda, which is obviously never going to really disappear because most people identify as middle class and they're going to continue uh, to do so. But there were some people who identified as, as working class and nobody's going to identify as aristocracy there. <laughs> um, the, uh, the number of employment sectors was interesting to see because people from, for instance, hotels and, and transport and communications uh, took part in the survey. Again, I used the categories from the census and this was a bit of a problem because they're really vague and kind of they're not very helpful, not very interesting for people to talk about. And qualifications, there's a real bias towards people um, who have a degree or above taking this kind of survey, turns out. Um, that's probably not very unexpected either. So um, moving on to impressions of archaeology. Now, once I had come up with some questions for people to do, um, and uh, sat down the other day to try and start analyzing this stuff. I thought, where am I going to start? I don't even know where to start. What am I going to correlate with, with these, you know, so a learning curve again. So I started with a question that I'd asked on what is your impression of archaeology? Is it boring? Is it interesting? Gratifyingly, most people said that it was interesting. Um, some people said that it was okay. Um, some people didn't care. And a couple of people found it boring or not interesting. Um, if we uh, cross-reference that with uh, ethnic identity, and this is self-identification uh, in the survey, um, then we can see that uh, there's, a, there's a good proportion of groups that do find it interesting, um, and uh, just as many white people proportionally find it, you know, sort of not really that interesting. But the people who 
didn't find it interesting um, did fall into black or other. And these are, I must say, clunky categories that I put together just for the purposes of trying to create the, the graphics here. So usually I would try and make it a little bit more refined than just white, black, and other. But um, that's just for the purposes of, of trying to get the presentation together. So the person who said it was boring uh, identified as white and other, was a male of 65 and had a bachelor degree. Um, he was self-employed, uh, identified as lower middle class and working in a uh, real estate sector. He thought archaeology was always looking to the past and not to the future. Um, he agreed that history matters to me, but didn't know if archaeology uh, taught him about his history. He first heard about archaeology at college age, let's see, okay, um, around college age. And uh, he's heard about archaeology through mostly television, museums, internet, magazines and newspapers and those sort of things. Not school, that's important here. So this is the kind of stuff that you can kind of um, drill down into to try and get uh, some idea of what the participants or like what they, um, how they first heard about archaeology. He doesn't relate to anybody who um, does archaeology, but he doesn't actually know any archaeologists personally. And this, what I found was interesting, and he's not interested in participating in archaeology, except maybe in public engagement and education. Now, why that kind of stood out might be um, an interesting thing to find out more about. Um, and you can see some of the other things here. I'll, I'll just move ahead. Um, I had a couple of Likert scale questions. Um, so I feel confident in my understanding of what archaeologists try and find out about, out about uh, strongly agree to strongly disagree. Um, interestingly here, there is, I mean, you can't really see a great pattern simply because of the number of people in different groups that took the survey, but there's a greater proportionality of, of white people who feel strongly confident in what they think archaeologists get up to. And by gender, interestingly, more men, I could resist doing the, the by gender, um, more men feel that they're strongly confident in what archaeologists do. It does spike up, obviously, in, in the simply agree, but strongly agree, yes. Even though there are um, far fewer men that took the survey. And archaeology teaches me about my history, um, note that uh, the white people who took the survey, these are people that identified only as white and Caucasian, not as um, any other um, uh, other mix of, of race or ethnic group, you know, really felt quite strongly that archaeology obviously taught them about their history. And actually some of the responses indicated that they didn't differentiate between their history and history in general. I think that's quite telling. The people who disagreed fell into three main types, depending on the interpretation of the question. So um, first there was the exclusion of black history because it speaks mainly to the history of white people, or I can't name any sites in Africa that have been um, studied, even though my ancestors came from there. Or people who are arguing with the semantics. So for instance, it's not my history, it's world history, fine. Um, and uh, uninterested white people who happen to be women. So they haven't felt personally linked to archaeology and um, it's uh, not my history, uh, it's other foreign history. So similar kinds of experiences in a way. Um, and in response to a long list of sub-disciplines in archaeology, because I thought it would be interesting to know what people would be interested in, of people who identified as black or of African descent 67% said they would be interested in studying the archaeology of the African diaspora or the archaeology of slavery. That was the highest um, number of, of interest. For people of colour overall, so excluding all those who identified only as white and Caucasian, um, the subjects, those subjects again were high in interest along with sub-Saharan Africa, but they weren't unanimously favoured, so there wasn't 100% sort of um, interest, which again, uh, was interesting, and that's something to be drilled down into more. For those identifying as white and Caucasian, uh, the pattern of interests were different, but again, the archaeology of slavery was also a high area of interest, which I thought was very good news for, um, for departments to uh, start investing 
in those sorts of areas. Gratifyingly, um, some people at least felt that uh, the survey itself had changed their feelings about archaeology. Um, and some of, the, um, some of the responses, of course, uh, the majority of people didn't, but the, some of the responses for yes and a bit were really important because some people said that they were going to uh, encourage their son, for instance, to go into the field. Um, and, and that person had identified themselves as black or of African descent. So that was uh, very gratifying. But there are lots of things for improvement here. Um, first of all, the sampling theory. Uh, you know, this is something that really I need to get feedback on. <laughs> um, also phrasing of questions. So how to phrase occupations, whether they even need to be done. Um, and, and some details about sort of school age learning and music. Um, and the Likert scale questions, could these questions be more pointed and really just get to the point about do you feel that you relate to archaeology personally? Um, do you think that things need to be changed? Would you like to see archaeology um, change and what areas of heritage are you interested in? So those kinds of questions, which um, you know, I sort of worked hard on this summer, you know, probably need uh, refreshing as well. But, um, I'll come back to the questions and suggestions hopefully later uh, after the next speaker. Yeah. <laughs>